Hello, my name is Carlos Urban, and today I'm going to talk in Lightroom about collections. Uh, I'm dedicating a whole 15 minute video on collections because I think this is a very important topic where I think a lot of people have confusion. I had myself a lot of confusion with collections at the beginning. So let me explain uh, my workflow and how do I use the collections. Before I do that, I want to explain to you the difference between folders and collections. When you import your pictures, right, what you do is you import them into a folder in your external drive or your C drive or your internal drive. In this particular case, I have a folder called 2013 Photos and within that C drive, I have my different folders this is exactly the same as this okay so there is no difference between those folders and these folders as a matter of fact if I right click over here and I go show in explore it takes me to where the window that I was at so folders is very easy to understand these are your folders in your computer and your hard drive or your external drive so and that's where you import all of your pictures to. So what do I do uh, when I import my pictures and how do I organize them? The way I organize them, and I used to do everything in the folders, but it's not the recommended way, and I'll show you in a moment why you want to do everything in the collections, okay? So I'm gonna, I did a shoot uh, yesterday. Uh, I went to the train museum and here I have my folder for the train museum. I have not created a collection yet, and the reason why uh, I was gonna create a collection right now, but I decided to do a video so I can show you how I would create a collection for this. The first thing that I do is I select all of my pictures, and I'll show you why in a second. The shortcut for selecting all of your pictures is Control A, or uh, Command A if you're using a Mac, okay? Now, when I open my collections, here are all the collection sets that I have, okay? And this can get very, very specific. I actually also, <laughs> I just noticed, I created a train museum collection set. I'm just going to delete it just so that I can show you how to create one. So I'm going to create a new one. So you have create a collection and think of a collection of the, the more specific piece. Collection set is where the collection goes. Smart collection allows you to automatically do things, which I do not recommend, because the problem with that is you can say, you know, it gives you all these different rules, like the ones that have a pick flag to go somewhere, but the problem is that, I don't know, it's just too much work to create a smart collection. It's, it's, it's more work with a smart collection than just doing it the regular way, at least I found. And sometimes they go to the folders that I don't, I mean the collections that I don't want to go. So let's go back over here. So I'm gonna create a collection set. So this is the top level. This is gonna be a, think of these collections here. You have all of these sets, okay? So my collection set, and I'm just gonna call it train museum, you know? You can call it whatever you want, you can change it. It doesn't go inside of a collection set because it's already, I don't want to, so if I click over here, I can put it in one of these collections. As I could put it under landscapes, but I'm not going to do that because this is not really a landscape. It's, it's something different. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at the top level. Okay, so I have here train museum. Now within train museum, uh, let me just check if all of my pictures are still selected. Yeah, they're, they're all selected. Okay, so when I go back to my collection, okay within train museum I'm gonna I mean my collection set I'm gonna create a collection this one is gonna go inside train museum and I'm gonna call this one all photos and you can call it whatever you want but this is where I'm gonna put all of my pictures from the train museum shoot you're probably thinking why are you gonna do that if you already have them here well I'll show you in a moment why uh, for some reason I thought it the, the most efficient way to do this is you have them all selected, but since I didn't, you might as well see how it is. So I'm going to do Control A again, and I can just drag it. But when I created this, if I had already them selected, the, you know, it would have done it automatically. But I'm just going to drag them. OK, 
Okay, so here are my 357 pictures that are in the folder. Now they are in the collection. So once they're in the collection, I don't need I don't even need to look at my folders anymore. Now I start working here in the collections. Okay? So I'm gonna do control A, uh, sorry, control D to deselect them. So now nothing is selected. And then I go through my way of, uh, you know, the, the different things that I want to do with these pictures. Uh, I'm going to go through a way that is more of the conventional way of doing it, but you can do it any way you want, okay? Uh, the first thing, usually when I go through the pictures, and I'm going to put this bigger. Actually, I'll just put it in a regular size. You know, usually I do either do nothing. If I do nothing means I'm not sure if it's something is one that I want to get rid of or not. Or I do pick. So I'm going to, in the shortcut is the letter P. You see, so it's flag pick. Okay. Or I, and the other one is reject. So this one is completely underexposed. So I'm going to just do the letter X. Reject. Okay. So this is the first thing that I do. At this point, I'm still not sure. So the ones that I don't do anything, you know, are still going to be in my all photos. Then I have pick and I have the rejected one. So I only did one because we want to do this quickly. If I do a filter, right, you can do a filter of the ones that I picked. So there is only one. And then now within either Train Museum or all my photos, I like to have it under Train Museum. Okay, so let's see, put P here again, the filter. I'm going to create another collection set. And I'm going to, sorry, another collection. You see, I made a mistake, but that's fine. Create another collection, and I'm going to call these picks. Okay. This is inside Train Museum. You see, this is what I was talking about. If you have it selected and you have this check mark, it's automatically going to put it there. So that's the one that I pick. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my photos again. And now I'm going to uh, look for the ones that I rejected. So here you have, this is, oh no, that's the one that I picked. So here you have the X. Okay. This is the one that I rejected. Now you have several choices. You can either leave it there, but I have, uh, you know, I want to be, if, if there is something that I'm sure I'm not going to use, then I'm just going to get rid of it. And what you do is you, there is a shortcut, but in this case, you know, sometimes a shortcut if you, you just want to make sure. So you have delete rejected photos. Okay. When you do that, it's going to remove it from the collection. But it still is in your folder. So if I go over here under, you see 357 and 356. If I want to delete it from here, okay, and again I can, you see I filter again my rejected, then I can go again photo, okay, and then you can go delete rejected photos. And it asks you, do you want to remove it from your disk? So it's asking you to make sure. I'm going to say, yeah, delete from the disk. Fine. Now it deleted from the disk and you're at 356, 356. Okay. So now let's go back to my collection. So I have all my photos. I have my pics. Now, the next one that I want to do, okay, is let's say, you know, pick just means this is one that I'm still considering, but I don't know if I'm going to edit it or not. So I have another category, which I call selects, okay? And those are the ones that I really like and I'm sure I want to edit them or process them. So this one I'm going to call picks, okay? And this, oh, sorry, not picks, picks I already did, selects. Uh, it goes inside my train museum set. Okay, uh, well right now I have this one selected, so my the one that I picked is also now a select. Okay, now what I like to do is if if I once I start editing them and I'm not gonna do much to it, I'm just gonna just show you for the purposes of it. I never do this, but let's just do auto. You know, I click auto, which by the way made it a lot worse. That's why you should never use auto. <laughs> 
uh, but anyway, I did auto and I don't know, let's just auto white balance. This is the one that I already processed in Lightroom. So what I like to do is I also like to put a star. You can put the star here. Sorry, this is the filter. You can put the star by either right clicking here and adding the star. You know, you can do set rating, okay? Or just the number. So here in this case, I'm just going to put one. And it already, already has one star. Because I like to have, I also like to have my star uh, so that I know what level it is. For me, a one means that it's basic editing in, in Lightroom. Two is that it's uh, more editing probably in Photoshop. Which, by the way, let's do that right now, okay? Because I know a lot of Photoshop users may be interested to do that. So in this case, this one I already did what I wanted to do in Lightroom. I'm going to take it to Photoshop. So I'm going to pause this while it does it. So now it is in Photoshop. And again, I the intent here is not to show you how to do Photoshop, but let's say I created a new layer, and I don't know. Uh, I remove something from here, whatever. You know? So now when I save it, which is, con by the way, Control-S is a shortcut. Well, I imagine if you use Photoshop, you know what the shortcut is. Just gonna pause it here so you don't have to well what it says. Okay, so now it's, I saved it in, in Photoshop and it went into Lightroom. And as you can see now, this file next to my raw file is a PSD. What I like to do is my Photoshop, even though you can tell this Photoshop because it says PSD, I like to put two stars, sometimes even three stars. But I know that this is my first edit, this is my second edit. My third star is my. Um, you know, my three stars is my third edit, and then I can still use my four and five stars for those that are special. Now, why is it that it's so important to use collections? The reason why it's so important to use collections is because here you can see we're in the develop mode, and I don't have a folder option. I can only look at my pictures here under the collections. So I already lost my folder option. I can so I want to go back and forth between library and develop. Library. And by the way, in any of these, if I go to print, you see, the only thing you have is your, uh, which by the way, I'll do the, the print module another day, but I just wanted to show you, when you go to print or slideshow or any of these, you only have your collection. So that's why you want to have everything in your collections. And you spend most of the time after you organize them on all that in your, probably in your development mode. So let's then go back to, um, and oh, by the way, in the development, you can keep making more collections. Let's say I want to have another category for those that I want to print. So I'm going to make another collection. Oh, no, I did a smart collection. Sorry. Create another collection, and I'm going to call these print. So these are the ones that I want to send for print. Okay. This is inside my collection set. It's still train museum. Okay. And now this one is the one that I want to print. By the way, you can move these things, you know. You see how, uh-oh, I moved it to the wrong place. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing when you're trying to show something and it doesn't do what you want it to do. So, sorry, I was having a little trouble. Basically, what you have is you click here, and you see how now it's moving it, and you can move it all the way over there, and now it is there, okay? All right, so I have my print, my selects, my print. By the way, I just noticed it puts them automatically, alphabetically. So if you want it, I think you can move them. I don't know how to, I tried to do it, but I do, didn't do it. So I'm just going to put to print and it will automatically now put it right before below the selects. So anyway, it's almost a 15 minute mark. I hope that now you have a very good idea on how to create the collections. And again, because this is a very confusing topic, I decided to dedicate the whole video to that. Thank you very much.